Okay. Hi. Thanks for coming. In the next 15 minutes, I will present breaking parser logic, take your personalization of mpub 0 days out. Also, page traversal is a common problem in web applications, but it's still hard to apply a good security mechanism. There are lots of pitfalls and edge cases that programmers may ignore, but the only thing they care about is still dot dot slash. In this talk, I will, uh, we try to pay more attention on analyzing parser logics and personalizations. During this process, we find, uh, we notice an interesting feature that could be perfectly applied on multi-layered architectures. We will detail this attack surface and give several case studies. Okay, let's go. Hi, I'm Orange, a security researcher from DevCore. We provide the most professional writing service and penetration testing in Asia. My job is researching and finding new zero days and attack service. I'm also a member of HitCon. We hold the largest hacker conference in Taiwan. Apart from that, I, I'm also a speaker, bounty hunter, and CTF trader. This is our agenda today. We will first highlight the brand side on path normalization and talk about why I focus on that. By knowing the brand side, we try to review existing web frameworks and find bugs from them. We will show zero dates on both Ruby on Rails and Spring framework. Lastly, the new attack service. Of course, in order to convince this is awesome, we will give several we, we will give several bug bounty cases. Okay, first, let's learn a new word, normalize. To make standard, determine the value by comparison to an item of non-standard value. The definition is easy, but if every instance has their own standards, it must be problems. And the next, why normalization? In security, it means that you need to protect something. In order to fix a bug without impacting business logic, it's common to apply the work around or filter instead of patching the bug directly. To apply the filter, you need to pass the data first, but it's hard to implement a real desired parser. Everyone follows RFC as their standard, IFC defined the specification but didn't tell you how to implement. So the more complicated the data format, the more hard it is to pass. So what's wrong with, what's wrong with, pass, uh, what's wrong with, pass normal, with normalization? Yes, inconsistency. This is a typical dangerous pattern and easy to find problem on it. The behavior in check must be the same as the behavior in use. Otherwise, the check function will be bypassed. It's just like my SSIF talk in last year, finding inconsistency between URL passes and URL features that lead to whole SSIF bypass. So for the past two years, I paid more attention on the bug inconsistency. For example, this is an interesting implementation in Java. There are different file handlers for each operating instance. In Windows, Java treats the file as UNC path, but Linux treats it as URL. The most difference between each other is the URL supports the query string, but UNC doesn't. Once we, once we know that there are several dangerous patterns, for example, the method get pass only return the part before the question mark. But the file system still recognize all as its pass. So here is an inconsistency. On the other hand, the method get file or to external phone return all the URL part. But if the check rely on the normalized result from then, we can forge a valid pass to bypass the check and read arbitrary file on the Linux. So back to our topic, why I target pass normalization? Because most websites handle files. 
Also, test traversal is, is an old problem in many web applications, but that is also the plus, but, but that is also the press with lots of protections and bypasses. As I mentioned before, there are lots of dangerous patterns, so that if you can find the difference between the, be, between the check and the use, you can bypass the protection. Another reason is, in large projects, the code change too fast and lack an overall security review. For the new commit, is there any side effect or bypass existing security mechanism? Who knows? Let's talk about our Mojara story. Java server faces is a standard on the Java EE, but it's just a standard need someone to imprint need someone to implement. So the top two implementation in the world are the MyFaces by Apache and Mojora by Oracle. While reading advisories, I noticed a report that reviewed Mojora and find CVE 2013 3.27. The report also inspired me to dig more into source. With a couple of days, I find a new vulnerability. It's a very obvious path traversal. Just read the file from query string. While I find this, I was very curious about why the advisory didn't notice that. With a little bit investigation, I find a reason. The bug was committed in 2015, but the code review was done in 2013. This points out a serious problem. Mojara is a very fundamental library, but since there is no one do a formal security review since 2015. So that is the reason to push me dig into the past normalization on web application and frameworks. Okay, so let's start our topic. First, how parsers could be failed. Here is a very obvious programming errors. Can you spot a bug? This code, code, this code was copied from Grails. Grails is a powerful, groovy, best web application framework. If you want to use Groovy as your backend language, you must have heard about Grails. This is the part of static file handling. The argument relative to pass is attacker controllable. In order to be compatible with Windows environments, the code repress current file separator with forward slash. So, did you have you find a bug? Okay, the answer is the method repress. Girls would like to repress current file separator with regular expression, so girls escape the path by pattern dot quote. This is the prototype of method repress, but in Java, repress has a big brother, and his name is repress O. Both methods are very similar, but the only difference between each other is the meaning of the first argument. The first argument in repress is the literal string to be repressed, but the other is the regular, is the regular expression to be executed. Both arguments are the string type. It seems the developer used the wrong method. The pattern that crawled includes the current file separator with sgapq and sgape. Because of the misuse, girls will recognize the sgap regular expression as literal string. As the result, there is a new data slash in girls. Yes, fails everywhere. Even worse, the buggy code was committed in 2014. So the bug has been there for several years. The next topic is how single slash could be failed. Maybe you have set out several paths in the past, but does your path end with a slash? This is a good question. Is it important? Yes. Let me show you how single slash could be failed. This is an off by slash fail on engine X. 
The first time this problem be shown was in the end of 2016, and this credit to Achilles. Also, this is not new, it's still worth to mention. This is a good attack vector without too much people known, and the idea appears in the world again and again. In engine X, there is the alias directive, and it can define a replacement for the specified location. This directive is very common in web architectures. In practical applications such as Django and Rails are not familiar with the uh, are not familiar with handling static files. So it's a prevalent pattern to put the engine X in front of them. But due to the lack of cheering slash in the location rule, the slash static dot dot will also hit the alias block. As the result, engine X will append the remaining part to the home slash app slash static. And we can traverse one label path to parent directory. So how single slash could be failed? You can search how to serve static file on Nginx on Google or a Stack Overflow, and you will find numerous answers with mistakes. This problem is also common in the implementation that you need to process the path by yourself. It's just like string copying in C language. To append a slash or not is a serious problem to you. So how to find this problem in the real world? We keep a private bug bounty cache here. From direct accessing the access folder, engine X will return 403 forbidden. However, when we try the slash s third dot dot slash, it also returned 403. It looks like we have successfully traversed a label to parent directory. But how to prove this? We append, we append as s slash app.js again and check the content. Yes, the same. So now we can download all the source and configuration file on the web loot. In this case, we get several sensitive information, such as the Django SQL key and the SQLite database. <laughs> Thank you. So for the past several months, I start to review the path normalization and parser part on web applications. Of course, we find several problems in diverse implementations. And here is the list. So the next section is in-depth review of existing implementations. Due to the time consideration and our new finding is more important, we will only show you two cases. The first one, directory traversal on Spring Framework. We all agree that Spring is a famous framework in Java web ecosystem. So we start from the patch of CVE 2014, CA25. It's also a patch traversal. So in order to prevent similar bugs again, Spring applies several security mechanisms. From the method name, we know Spring first check whether the path is valid or not, and use its resource on the location as the last guardians to ensure the path on the appropriate locations. This is the, this is the simplified version of Mesa is, in, is invalid path. It's just a simple blacklist. And the most important is, if there is any dub dub in the path, Spring will normalize the path and check and return a boolean. As I mentioned before, this is a dangerous pattern because Spring just rely on this boolean to protect all the system. So if you can find problems in the clean path or inconsistency between the check and the use, you can bypass the, pro the protection. So how clean pass works? In order to compatible with Windows environment, it simply repress backslash to forward slash. Spring, Spring also separate the path with the forward slash, check the element one by one, and store the result into path elements. If the element is a single dot, 
Spring just do nothing. But if it is the parent directory, Spring will set a flag to remove item in next iteration. In the end, Spring used the forward slash to join all the elements. Okay, that's all. Did you find the problem in this method? Okay, the problem is Spring allows the empty element. That means you can forge an empty element in pass array. During the normalization, it will be normalized with the parent directory and cause the inconsistency with the file system. It seems to be a small problem, but the impact is huge. This table shows the difference between the clean pass and the file system. Due to the empty element, when there is more than one slash in the pass, things start going wrong. The main third is invalid pass return true because there is no dot dot in the result. So Spring believed without any dot and read the file with user surprise pass. So how to export it? We clone the Spring official sample from GitHub. As you can see the payload, there are six slash normalize the next six dot dot slash. This exploit also works on the container such as Tomcat. As the secured container Tomcat by default enables several security features. But this exploit perfect bypass all restrictions. As a result, we can read arbitrary file on Windows. So, how to fix? Do not use Windows. <laughs> yeah, this is the real mitigation from Spring official website. <laughs> Excellent. As a bonus, let's talk, a, let's talk about the code infectivity. Programmer follows the dry principle. Don't repeat it yourself. And Spring is a popular framework under a free software license. So lots of projects refer the code from Spring. Spark is also famous and a micro framework for web applications. In 2014, Spark wanted to improve their security mechanism on static file handling. But since writing a good parser is really hard, so it just copied the code from Spring. As the result, Spark also copied a similar problem into their code base. So Spark also suffered from this vulnerability. The next case is Ruby on Rails. Spark is, is the Azure pipeline system in Rails, which means that all static files will be managed, compiled, and served by Spark Keys. And of course, we find a problem here. But unfortunately, Rails only use the Azure pipeline system on development mode. Also, this only affects development mode. The default Rails command is under threat. So you can simply reproduce the bug by just two commands, Rails new and Rails server. Due to the time consideration, I will not go into too much details. The root cross is the sprocket support and undocument file scheme in the past. There are several pieces in this exploit, but because of the time, you can check the detail after this talk. We will just go to the next page. But it's still worth to say this is possible for code execution. Because of the support of file scheme, you can override some internal options with your query string. As an Azure file, uh, as an Azure pipeline system, Sprocket will compile the content while processing the file. If the file extension is ERB, Sprocket will interpret the file as Ruby template engine. This feature could be combined with the file upload attack. You upload a malicious file to temp folder and ask you the code by Spark Keys. <sighs> oh, are you okay? The boring part is over. You can stretch yourself a little bit. Okay, here's the cat, and let's go to the most interesting part. While I was reading the source, I noticed a feature that could be perfectly exploited on multi-layered architectures. 
In the following page, I will introduce the idea and several cases, including an access control bypass in Uber and two remote call executions. In addition, I would like to thank Amazon and Vendor for the open mind vulnerability disclosure and their quick response time. It's a very good experience working with them. Yeah. We start with the HTTP feature, URL path parameter. It can define information to the specified path segment. Some researchers have already pointed out this feature may lead to security problems, but their concerns still depend on programming fails. When I saw this, I was thinking about how to make this feature more severely. Yes, I find reverse proxy. Reverse proxy is a common web architecture. There are several benefits, resource sharing, load balance, cache, and security. For example, you can share different services on the same port and IP address, or use load balance to distribute the request to different backend service. As the security, Reverse proxy can isolate the server from outside and configure the access control in proxy layer. This is a classic reverse proxy architecture. As I said before, it's a prevalent pattern to serve static file directly and pass the business logic to backend service. I have talked about the off by slash problem, but this, but now we focus on the interaction between the proxy and backend servers. Engine X will serve it directly if the incoming request match the static pattern, such as files and scripts. But if it is the request for business logic, Engine X will pass to backend servers. Okay, so back to our topic. What will happen when the feature makes the reverse proxy? URL path parameter is defined in HTTP specification, but not all web server care about it. However, Java mostly support this feature. Reverse proxy is not a single request, single server handling architecture. The same request will be interpreted by different web servers. So the inconsistency between the proxy and backend servers will lead to security problems. So I give a name for this. Okay, not really. The domain is still available to buy. Just kidding. So how dangerous this could be? In the reverse proxy, it can bypass access control list, no matter its black list or white list. It, it can also escape from current context mapping to access the management in the fast and other contacts on the same server. DevOps always believe that no one can touch their internal service. But today, this is posed to outside, and there, mu there must be lots of fun for hackers. And I affect by this, this is the architecture's problem and vulnerable by default without any programming errors. So if you are using reverse proxy with Java as your backend service, you are under threat. Basically this, uh, basically, this is a huge attack surface. Think about how many reverse proxies in the world could be bypassed so that you can touch many internal services from outside. For an easy example to understand, Tomcat exposed the application portal in localhost and maps to outside by a patch. Due to the normalization of a patch, we cannot direct access the backend management in the fast. However, we can use our traversal trick dot dot semicolon to traverse one label to touch the loot of Tomcat. A patch first handle this request. From the view of, of, from the view of a patch, dot dot semicolon is a normal folder name and matches the context mapping, so it passed to backend service. But in Tomcat, data semicolon is a parent directory and will normalize with the portal. As the result, we can access all applications on the Tomcat, including the management in the fast. 
Everything looks good from their side, but when they put all together, everything start goes wrong. Okay, by knowing the theory, let's see real world cases. The first case is Uber. Uber disallowed direct access to the domain uberinternal.com. From the name, we know this is the domain for internal purpose. Once we accessed, it redirect us to one login single sign-on service, and this, and this redirection was done by Nginx. We find the domain jira.uberinternal.com, and we also know that Jira is a Java-based application. Hmm, it seems to be reverse proxy again. With a little bit searching, we find this website is post a status API, and this appears to be a white list for monitor purpose. We applied our traversal check again. It looks good in engine X and match the white legs prefix. So pass to Jira. As the result, we can access the Jira internal and see the internal projects. Uh, we can see the Jira dashboard and see the internal projects. And this is another portal we accessed, an internal code review portal. Okay, so next, what can we do if we bypass the access control? We will give a code execution case in binder. Basically, I find this code execution in another bounty program. Although I got a code execution, I find my target is not in their bounty scope because it's on a third party service. But fortunately, there's also a bounty program in that service provider. So in the following case, I will use this site as example. This is the, this is the screen, screenshot for the website. It's just a login patch without too much functionality. When I would like to hack something, the first thing I care about is the HTTP header. From the header, we can observe many interesting information. The header told you that it is running on the engine X. However, the response also set a special cookie, say session ID. It seems to be the default session name in Tomcat. But why engine X need this cookie? From our experience, we believe this is also the reverse proxy architecture. By the way, this is also a good methodology to know whether the target is running under reverse proxy or not. We applied our traversal trick again and got a cool patch. This is a 404 patch, but the spatial is the patch was returned by Tomcat. This represents that we have already passed the first proxy and accessed the backend service. Another thing is, from the error message, we got an important hint. The hint is that our request, our request pass will be the pass info in the backend index.cfn. From the hint, we can construct the server configuration in our mind. Nginx just rewrite the request to backend index.cfn. But for the data slash, it will rest a 400 error because the path jump out of the web loot. However, our trick, uh, our, our trick can pass through the proxy and normalize the index.cfn, so we can touch the loot in Tomcat. As you see, the file extension is CFN, the CoFusion Markov language. From the extension, we can guess what backend engine is it. In this case, it is running on the Relo, an open sourced CFN engine. From the Relo menu, we also know that the management interface is on the Relo context admin slash web.cfn. This is the screenshot for the management interface, but did you find something wrong? Yes, the interface just asks you to set a new password. But is that easy? No. The first time I, I saw it was not like this. It's a normal login patch. However, when I refreshed several times, the patch changed. 
So I don't know why. <laughs> so what's wrong with it? With a little bit investigation, I think I find the root cause. When there is a large number of requests, the website will use the cloud to scale up automatically. But while scaling up, it seems to forget to pull the password file. So this is the root cause to invite you to enter the new password. However, not all instances are vulnerable. It seems to be only three to four misconfigurations. So we, so we have about 16% probability to see the new password patch. Also that a, success, a successful login is still not easy because there is a captcha in login process. Uh, and to make things worse, every request to the cloud will be dispatched randomly to different backend servers. For example, if the server in displaying the captcha is different from the server in receiving the credential, it will rest in one captcha error. So it's just like in playing a lottery. We need to keep the station and poke the same server on both captcha and login process. With fucking much time in try and errors, we finally get into the management interface. Once we enter the interface, the next question is how to pop out a shell. In Reno, there are several ways to pop out a shell, but due to the request being dispatched to different servers, we need to minify our steps. Here, we choose log injection. Reno supports many features. One is the customized template file. So we modify the 404 patch to exception.log. And then we need to inject our malicious code into exception.log. However, while exploring this, we face a problem. The log file is too large to be executed. But did you remember the website will scale up when there are lots of requests? So that we can use heavy requests to force the cloud launch a new instance and exploit on that instance. Okay, now every 404 patch is our back door and we got a shell back. The last is our Amazon cache. While searching for targets, we find a spatial domain. From the name, it seems to be the collaboration system for internal purpose. And from the copyright, we know this system was built from an open source the project Nasio. Nasio is a content management system for business applications. It's written in Java. But in that time, I just want to improve my Java auditing skill, so I start to review the code. During the code review, we find several tiny bugs can be trained together to gain a code execution. We first look, look at the access control in Nasio. While auditing the source, we find Nasio maps all URLs to a spatial authentication filter. And the first bug is lying on that. From the filter, we know most patches require a valid credential. Uh, we know the uh, we know most. Pa <laughs> Sorry. From the filter, we know most patches require a valid session, but some entrances can bypass that, like login.jsp. But how did the filter retrieve the current con? current patch to compare it with, it retrieved the path from the HTTP sublet request. So what's the problem? In order to handle URL path parameter, Nasio truncates the path by semicolon. As I mentioned before, the behavior in URL path parameter are various. Every web server has own implementation. The Nasio's way may be safe in the containers such as Widefly and WebLogic, but now it runs on the Tomcat. The difference between the Nasio and the Tomcat will lead to the security problem. 
So due to the truncation, we can forge a request that matches the, matches the whitelist in access control, but reach the, reach the unauthorized area in NASDAQ. However, we still could not do anything. In fact, most patches return a null pointer exception because the sublay logic was unable to obtain a valid credential. But this still gives us a chance to knock the door. From the, from the configuration file, we noticed that whole the NASIO is based on SYN framework. I have a review since several years ago and find numerous hacker-friendly features. So for me, the next step is training the first bug to access the unauthorized SYN framework. So let's talk about the, let's talk about the SYN feature. In order to control the browser, SYN framework introduces a series of HTTP parameters. Action method is one of them. It can invoke specific expression language from the query string. It seems dangerous. However, there are some preconditions before the invocation. The invoke expression language must be in a certain format and in a file under context root. For example, there is a file named foo.xhtml, and you can invoke the util.sgap by the following URL. The feature looks good. You cannot control any file on remote server, therefore you can't invoke any expression language. However, there is one more crazy feature. To make things worse, if the previous invocation returns a string, and the string looks like an expression language, same framework will invoke again. Yes, it's double evaluation. But what the hell is the fucking double evaluation? <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand. With the crazy feature, if we can control the return value, we can ask you arbitrary EL. So we need to find a good gadget. This is very similar to the ROP, or a return-oriented programming in binary exploitation. Oh, sorry. We choose the file with the long name. Why we choose this? It is because the request that get parameter returns a string that we can control from URL. Also, the whole tag is supposed to assign a variable. We can still ask you the partial tag. Okay, by training with the first access control bypass, we can now ask you the arbitrary EL without any authentication. But it's still not over yet. We failed to pop our shell. Sing also knows that EL is risky, so there is a blacklist to block dangerous invocations. However, it's just a single, simple, simple string matching, and we all know that blacklist is always a bad idea. So we simply use the array-like operator to avoid the bad pattern. So let's summarize our steps and chain all together. We first find the personal, personalization bug to bypass the access control. While we can access the unauthorized SYN sublet, we use the feature and choose the good gadget so that we can control the return value. We also prepared our second stage payload in the URL and use a red like operator to bypass the blacklist. The last step is to write our sh write, write the shell code with Java Reflection API and wait for our shell back. So this is the overview for how the exploit. I will explain each part one by one in detail. First, the yellow highlight is the access control bypass. In order to bypass the whitelist, we choose login.csp as our prefix. Nasio will scan all the request paths and truncate until the first, first semicolon. So due to the inconsistency between the Nasio and the container, we can bypass the authentication and touch the createfile.xhtml. 
We choose the file because it will be handled by scene framework. Once we can touch the scene sublet, we use the action method to invoke partial expression language in a known file. Here we choose the gadget on the file with the long name. So why we choose this? It's because the return value of the request.get parameter is a string and we can control it from URL. So we prepared our second stage payload in the query string directory named for pop-up. As the crazy feature, scene framework will invoke value as expression language again. In order to avoid the bad pattern, we use array-like operator to bypass the blacklist. We also use Java Refaction API to get, to get all methods from java.lane.runtime. The element index 7 is the method get runtime to return the runtime object. And the index 15 is the method exec with a string type argument. Okay, the last thing is the shell command. Here, we would like to pop a shell back. And we got a shell. Okay, thanks. Okay, so how to prevent this type of attacks? This is a hard, this is hard to fix because the URL pass parameter is a normal feature and not a bug in both sides. According to my experience in bug reporting, most vendors cannot patch the bug completely in the first time. Their patch is bypassable. So we mitigate from two aspects. One is to isolate your backend application, remote, remote the management interface and other contacts from your Java container. And the second is to ensure the behavior between the proxy and backend servers. But it seems there is no directive to disable the feature. So I write a patch for that. You can check the hyperlink after this talk. Okay, summary. In this talk, we first show the brand side about the pass parser and pass normalization, including inconsistency, misuse method, and the off by slash problem in Nginx. Then we introduce a new attack service on the reverse proxy architecture that can bypass access control and escape from context mapping. The last, we show several case studies on not only open source applications, but also bug bounty programs. Okay, the last page. Here is my contact information. Please let me know if you have any further question or new findings. Also, we will release the whole story of our case study in my blog. You can follow my Twitter to know the latest post. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for being here. Thanks.